Hello everyone. As we learned before, density is defined as the mass per volume. In terms of metric units, the unit of density is kilogram per cubic meter. In this problem, we are given the radius of a ball, and we are told that it's made of iron, and we are given the density of the iron. And the unknown is the mass. Now we know that the volume of a ball, which is sphere, is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We are given the radius, so we can go ahead and calculate the volume, and we have to convert the centimeter to meter, since the density is given per cubic meter. This will yield 2.44 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meter. Since we have the volume, we can solve for the mass. Mass will be density times volume. Density is 7.8 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per cubic meter times the volume and this will yield 190 kilogram. Specific gravity is a ratio of the density of a substance to the density of water and this will be the maximum density of water at 4 degrees Celsius which is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. So for example here we are asked to find the volume of a substance whose specific gravity is 11.3 and mass is 3.5. Now to find the volume, we know density is mass over volume, hence volume is mass over density. Now here we are given the specific gravity, and we know specific gravity is the density of the material over density of water. So to find the density of this specific object, we have to apply the specific gravity by the density of water. So this will be 11.3 times density of water, which is 10 to the power 3 kilogram per cubic meter and this will yield 11,300 kilogram per cubic meter as you can see this material represents lead now we can find the volume by dividing the mass by the density of this material the mass is 3.5 kilogram the density is 11,300 kilogram per cubic meter. Kilogram will cancel out. The answer will be in meter cube or cubic meter. And this will yield 3.10 times 10 to the power negative 4 cubic meter. That's around 310 cubic centimeters. Now the new topic is pressure. Uh, pressure is defined as force per area, and it has unit of unit of force divided by unit of area, which is newton per meter square. We call this unit Pascal. In case of fluids, there are several properties that we need to know. At any point, the fluid exerts a pressure that is the same in all directions, and the fluid pressure is always perpendicular on the surface it's acting on. In the case of pressure in fluids that has certain depth, we assume first that the fluid is static, it's not moving, and that the density is uniform throughout. If we take the depth to be h, then the force acting on an area A at certain depth h will be equal to the weight of the fluid over that area. Now, since the weight is the mass of the fluid above that area times the acceleration due to gravity and since density is mass over volume hence mass is density times volume we can replace the mass by density times volume of the liquid and this volume will be the volume above the area A hence we can replace this volume by the area A times the depth above its edge which will constitute the volume above area A. Now since pressure is defined as force over area, we can replace the force by the weight of the fluid, which we derived earlier. As you see, area will cancel out, and this will yield an equation for the pressure as a function of depth in a specific fluid. We can see from this equation that the only variable is the depth. 
since the density of the fluid and the acceleration due to gravity are constants. Now consider a cylinder was submerged in a fluid like water. How can we calculate the forces acting on the top and on the bottom of that cylinder that has cross-sectional area A? Now the force on the top would be equal to the pressure times the area since pressure is force divided by area force will be pressure times area at the bottom it will be also the pressure at the bottom times the area now is the pressure difference uh, the answer is yes because the pressure depends on the depth so now if we write the force in terms of pressure we learned from the previous slide that the pressure is the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times the depth at which this area is located in that case it's h1 for the top area and it's h2 for the bottom area now the net force will be the difference between f2 and f1 since they are acting opposite to each other so if you subtract f1 from f2 you'll get this equation where h2 minus h1 uh, represent the height of the cylinder hence the area of the cylinder times h2 minus h1 is actually representing the volume so we can replace h2 minus h1 times the area by the volume of the cylinder now notice that h2 minus h1 times the area represent the area of the water encompassed by the cylinder so we can replace it by the volume of the water which is equal to the volume of this uh, cylinder so notice this equation uh, density times g times v the density times v represent the mass of the liquid encompassed by the volume of the cylinder times g so this gives rise to the principle Archimedes principle that any object completely or partially submerged in a fluid is buoyed by a force whose magnitude is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object in this example we are given the density of gold the density of the solid we have and we are asked to find the buoyant force f sub b that is experienced by a gold crown that has mass of 0.6 kilogram in water now we know that buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid that the object is immersed in times the acceleration of gravity times the volume of the fluid that is displaced as a result of the submerged object and this volume of the fluid is always equal to the volume of the object immersed assuming that it's completely uh, submerged in the fluid and now we, we know the density of water since the fluid is water and we know the acceleration due to gravity but we don't know the volume of the liquid displaced or the volume of the object immersed we know however the density of that object and the mass of that object hence we can find the volume of the object so the volume of the solid is equal to the mass of that solid divided by its density this came from the equation density equal mass over volume hence volume is mass over density and now if you plug the values the mass is 0.6 kilogram and the density is 19.3 times 10 to the power 3 and that's kilogram per cubic meter if you carry out the calculation the volume of the solid will come out to be 3.11 times 10 to the power negative 5 cubic meter and this is equal to the volume of the liquid displaced so now we go back to our equation and plug the value now the density of water is 1000 kg per cubic meter g is 9.8 meter per second square and the volume of the liquid displaced is 3.11 times 10 to the negative 5 cubic meter if you carry out the calculation the buoyant force would come out to be 0 0.305 and the unit is newton because if you notice here cubic meters will cancel out with cubic meter and you are left with kilogram meter over second square which is the definition of Newton in this problem we are given the mass of a sunken ship to be 5 times 10 to the power 5 kilogram 
And we are asked about the volume of the airbags needed to be inflated inside the hull of that ship in order to lift it up. Now the ship is made of uh, steel and the specific gravity of steel is 7.8. Uh, so that's basically uh, tells us that the density of steel would be 7.8 times the density of water, which is 1000. And this will yield 7.8 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, now in order to be able to lift the ship, the buoyant force has to be bigger than the weight of the ship. And we know the buoyant force is the density of that uh, fluid, which is water in that case, times the acceleration due to gravity, times the volume of the liquid displaced as a result of the submerged object. Now this one has to be bigger than the weight of the ship, and we know the weight is the mass of the ship times the acceleration due to gravity. Now what is the weight of the ship? Uh, the mass of the ship the steel part of the ship, at least, is equal to 5 times 10 to the power 5 kilogram. This is times 9.8 meter per second square will yield 4.90 times 10 to the power 6 newton. So the buoyant force has to be bigger than this value. Now let's go ahead and plug the values for the buoyant force. Uh, the liquid, which is uh, or the fluid here, the density of the fluid is the density of water, which is uh, 10 to the power 3 kilogram per cubic meter, g is 9.8 meter per second square, times the volume of the ship. And the volume of the ship will include both the volume of the steel plus the volume of the airbags that will be inflated. This whole thing should be uh, bigger than 4.9 times 10 to the power 6 newton. So let's go ahead and solve for the volume of the ship needed in order to be able to lift it up. So sol solving for the volume of the ship, the volume of the ship has to be bigger than 4.9 times 10 to the power 6 newton divided by moving those two terms to the other side, 10 to the power 3 kilogram over cubic meter times 9.8 meter per second square. And this will yield that the volume of the ship needed should be bigger than 500 cubic meter. Okay. Now the volume of the ship includes both the volume of the steel that make up the ship plus the volume of the airbag. And we need to find the volume of the airbag. Now what is the volume of the steel that make up this ship? We can find the volume of the steel by using the mass of the steel divided by the density of the steel in the case of that ship. We are given its mass, the steel, mass of the ship, and the density of the steel. Hence, we can find the volume of the steel that make up the ship, the steel, ship, the steel part of the ship, which will be uh, the mass 5 times 10 to the power 5 kilogram divided by the density, which is 7.8 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per cubic meter, and this will yield 64.1 cubic meter. Okay, so that's the volume of the steel. Now we can calculate the volume of the air, the volume of the airbags needed. So the volume of the airbags, the volume of the liquid space, which is the volume of the ship immersed in that liquid, which we found to be 500 cubic meters. That's the minimum volume needed. So the volume of the air should be bigger than that. Minus 64.1 cubic meter. And this will yield that the volume of the airbag needed should be bigger than 435.9 cubic meters. Okay. So 436 cubic meters should very much do it.